This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are going to take a look at some of the most broken spell combos in V Rising Gloom Rot. Let's get to it. So before we start talking about the combos, we need to talk about the dash. The best and only dash you should be currently using is the Veil of Illusion. That is because it is the only dash that without any type of jewel support gives you a buff. Now I know jewels can buff you in other ways, giving you shields and stuff like that for the other dashes, but the jewels that you can put on this dash also do that and it also comes with a buff which is phantasm so when you dash with this it creates a copy of you like all the others but that copy will shoot things around you and it gives you stacks of phantasm and phantasm is absolutely phenomenal because it reduces your spell cooldowns by one percent per stack and it gives you a two percent chance per stack to reset the cooldowns on one of your spells when you cast it this stacks up to 10 times that means it can give you a max 10 percent cooldown reduction and a 20% chance to cast a spell for free. Once that happens, you lose all stacks of Phantasm, and then you have to rebuild them again. But if you're just dashing around naturally, you're naturally building stacks of Phantasm. So now that we know what dash we're going to be using with all of these spell setups, let's talk about our first spell combo. Our first spell combo is Mistrance and Soul Burn. Mistrance allows you to go ethereal, and when you take a hit while you're ethereal, you teleport to the location of your cursor. This is extremely handy for repositioning into large groups of enemies to then hit them with soul burn. While soul burn can only affect three enemies, it can affect three enemies at a time. It is an AoE spell that happens around you. And as you can see here, it drains the life from up to three nearby enemies, dealing 70% magic damage and inflicting condemn and leeching 40% health from each of those enemies. Now, not only does soul burn heal you, which is super strong in its own right, it also silences enemies, preventing them from doing anything anything and attacking them does not break the silence. This is crazy strong because while there are plenty of things in frost that can allow you to lock down enemies and prevent them from doing anything, when you attack them it breaks their frozen state allowing them to attack again. That doesn't happen with soul burn. For this setup I highly recommend using scholar blood. This just synergizes with everything that this spell setup does. It increases our spell power allowing soul burn to hit harder. It reduces our cooldowns and gives us a chance to free cast which stacks with all of the stacks of phantasm we are going to get and it gives us spell life leech which also stacks with our soul burn. I also highly recommend using the slashers whatever highest level slashers you can get at the time that is because it's going to make us repositioning masters. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We got a large group of enemies here I'm going to just jump in the middle of them and actually make sure my mouse is on the right setup here and while this is not my best performance when fighting you can see that this is an absolutely insane spell setup that gives you just tons of control over the battlefield. It also has a ton of sustain with the life gen that you get from the soul burn. So let's quickly talk about the perks that you want to look for on your jewels. So you can see here on the soul burn, I have one that doesn't do a whole lot of good, but I have two other really strong ones. So any combination that you can get on these is going to work out well, even if you end up with a situation like this. And I wanted to equip this one. I actually have better options, but I wanted to equip this one to show you it's okay if you have one thing on there that's not super great. If the other two are very strong. So I have increased life drain by 12%, which just increases our healing even more than all the healing that we already have. And I have increased damage, which is great because we're damaging three targets at one time. Other good options for soul burn are the reduced cooldown by each target silence, which can go up to 0.8 seconds, as well as increasing the targets hit by one. That's the max you're going to get. If I hold down alt, you can see that's all you really get. There's the increased targets hit by one. Another really good one to look out for is the remove all negative effects from self when cast this is super handy because we can cast this so often it pretty much ensures that you're never going to keep any negative status effects on you for very long this is absolutely fantastic for people such as myself who like to get lit on fire a lot now an ideal gem would look something like this this is almost perfect rolls i mean not perfect as far as the numbers that we got there they're a little mediocre but the combination of abilities we got on this one are absolutely fantastic it removes all negative status effects it reduces your cooldowns and it increases the silence duration mistrance on the other hand doesn't have a ton of really insane abilities, but some of the ones that you can go after are when triggered, reduces the cooldown of your secondary weapon skill by 53%. That is really, really good because it allows you to spam your secondary weapon skill more, which if you are using the slashers is the camouflage ability. When triggered, grants three stacks of phantasm. This is an absolutely insane one. This is one you should totally strive for with this setup because it's going to further reduce the cooldowns of our soul burn and help to ensure that we can get a second cast. So if you do end up in a situation where you have 
have a not so good ability like this, this will be handy because this is our only other way to proc this ability twice to get condemn on something twice, which would inflict agony on it the second time around instead. And then triggering it fears the enemies around you, just kind of handy for sending them running and disrupting battle for a few seconds. Another really good one is the consumes the weaken from enemies near the destination that you're teleporting to to gain a shield absorbing 48% damage based on your spell power and it can stack up to three times, meaning when you land at the location you can hit three targets total. Our next combo is Corrupted Skull, launches a projectile that deals 80% magic damage and summons a skeleton and inflicts Condemn. The attack deals 40% bonus damage to enemies below 30% health. That combined with Ice Block is just silly. Ice Block reads turn target ally or self into solid ice, rending them unable to move or act for up to 2.2 seconds. The ice shields for 280% of your spell power, grants immunity to crowd control effects, and heals up to 8% maximum health while active. Now, this one really shines when you combine it with the right jewel setup, so we're going to talk about that before I show off the actual abilities in action. So one of the big ones for this that you want to look for is Conjures a Nova of Ice inflicting chill or consuming chill, inflicting freeze lasting 3.4 seconds when the effect ends. That, when combined with inflicts chill on enemy attackers dealing physical damage to you, ends up in a situation where you get attacked and then you bust out of it and immediately freeze everybody around you. Now, there are a few other things that you can combine with this, but your best in slot is going to be increased healing by whatever amount that you end up getting. This right here is your ideal gem setup for Ice Block. Other things that you can look for in that third slot are absorb an additional 41% of your spell power and charges target's weapon with Arctic Energy, so your next primary attack deals 38 bonus damage and inflicts chill. For Corrupted Skull, the big one that you want here and the biggest one that matters is the launch two lesser projectiles in an arc instead of one. Each lesser projectile deals 36% of the original damage. You're not really after this for the damage, you're after this for skeleton spam, and this allows you to spawn two skeletons at one time. Other fun abilities that you can get on this include hitting an enemy already affected by Condemn inflicts agony, which deals 12% damage four times over the duration, and then hitting an enemy already affected by Condemn also inflicts Bane. When the enemy affected by Bane dies, you summon a skeletal mage with 27% extra health instead of a normal skeleton. Other fun things that you can get on this are conjures a bone spirit that circles around the target dealing up to 15% damage and inflicting condemn to any enemy it hits. One that I highly recommend to avoid is hitting an allied skeleton causes them to explode. It does do a good amount of damage but you rely on skeletons to disrupt battle for this setup so you want your skeletons to be on the battlefield as long as possible. So for this one once again I highly recommend scholar blood. Don't worry I don't recommend scholar blood with all of them, but it just works really well with this one because it allows you to spam spells faster. And for the weapon, I recommend using the Reaper because of this ability right here. This whole setup is kind of a ranged attack setup, so having a ranged attack is super handy. You could also maybe use the pistols if you want, but I don't really like the pistols, so I'm never going to really recommend them. They're not bad, they're just not for me. So the fun part with this build is that you get a lot of skeleton spam and you can cast Ice Block on your skeleton spam to freeze all of the targets in an area, and then you can just cast your Reaper ability on them and knock them backwards or hit them and do the spinny attack and you just get a lot of skeletons to play with and being able to ice block them and freeze everything that is around them including yourself you can also freeze yourself if necessary if you need a heal the free heal from the ice block is super handy and being able to cast it on your skeletons as well as yourself in order to freeze all of the targets in an area just gives you so much control over the battlefield as well as basically having the ability ability to just spam tons of skeletons and have a skeleton army fighting for you, disrupting battle while you just hang back and toss howling reapers into groups of enemies is insanely strong. Our next setup is all about going absolute beast mode, and that is using power surge combined with blood rage. Both of these give you increased attack speed and increased move speed and apply debuffs to the target, allowing you to one, gain HP and deal damage over time. As far as the jewels go, you want to look for things that give you extra extra sustain, stuff like shielding you, increase the effect duration, as well as increased move speed, increased attack speed, and increased physical damage output. For Blood Rage, we have killing an enemy unit during the effect heals you for 2.2% of your maximum health. Obviously, this percentage varies. Increase the duration of the effect.
effect by as much as you can get it. Once again, another shield. Shield sell for allies for 80% of your spell power. Other things to keep an eye out for are remove all negative effects and increasing your physical damage output. You can see that goes for between 10 and 20 and our killing an enemy to heal us goes for 1.2 to 2.5%. As for the weapons and the blood, I highly recommend using the slashers. That is because they just allow for insane repositioning when things get a little hairy. They also attack insanely fast and even faster once you proc both of these abilities. And for the blood type, you want brute blood. Brute blood gives you life leech, which stacks with the life leech we're going to get from proccing life leech with blood rage. It increases our primary attack speed and our gear level. Our healing received is also increased and we get a 6% chance every time we recover health to boost our movement speed and the damage of our primary attack by 20%. This just synergizes with everything we have going on. And you can see that this setup is just nutty. We get an insane increase in move speed, attack speed, and damage. We also have a ton of sustain because we are attacking so fast and regening health so fast that the enemy, it's really hard for them to do enough damage to us to really bust us down any significant amount. We also have a ton of control over the combat area, allowing us to dive in and out of combat, and it's just a super, super strong build. Now, I do want to point out, you could use Rogue Blood with this setup. You're going to have even more increased move speed. You're also going to have increased damage with the critical strike chance increase, and you're going to have even more maneuverability and increased stacks of Phantasm because you're going to be able to use your dash much more often because it's going to have that 25% cooldown reduction. Well, 12 to 25% cooldown reduction. And you can see here, this is what it looks like with our base move speed with just the Rogue Blood, and then we proc both of these and look how fast we are. We're as fast as a freaking horse when both of those are going on. It's absolutely insane. Our last insane spell combo is Sanguine Coil combined with Spectral Wolf. So Spectral Wolf sends out a wolf that hits multiple targets up to three without any type of mods, hitting the first one for 125% of your spell damage. And then after that, each hit deals 85% less damage or deals 85% of the damage of the previous hit. It also applies weaken on the enemy and stacks Phantasm on yourself. Sanguine Coil launches a projectile that deals 75% magic damage, drains 25% health and inflicts leech. It heals allies hit for 100% and sell for 25% of your spell power. Hitting an enemy affected by leech consumes the effect and heals you for 5% of your maximum health. Do you see where this is going? So the jewel setup that makes this OP is extremely specific. So for Sanguine Coil, you want the increased max number of charges. This gives you a total of four charges to your Sanguine Coil. Then you also want bounces towards an additional target after first First target hit dealing 44% of the initial damage or healing and it can bounce back towards the owner. If you're fighting a target 101, it hits the target, bounces back to you and gives you additional healing. On top of that, it just allows you to do more damage to more targets with the spell. Now, other things to look out for Sanguine Coil are lethal attacks restore one charge, consumes leech on hit, healing cell for a percentage of your maximum health and that goes from 3.5 up to 6% of your maximum health and consumes leech on hit dealing a percentage of extra bonus damage up to 35%. For Spectral Wolf, the big one that you want is the wolf returns to you after the last bounce, healing you for a percentage of your spell power. Reducing the damage penalty per bounce is also really nice. The Consumes Weaken to spawn a Wisp to heal yourself for additional is chasing after the Wisps is a terrible mechanic, so if you can, avoid that one. Other good things to look out for are initial projectile inflicts a fading snare on enemies hit and increasing your projectile range. This allows you to be further from the targets when you are casting the wolf ability. If you're with a large group of people, if you're fighting with a full clan of people, having the Consumes Weekend to spawn the Wisps could be somewhat handy because they're just going to naturally run into these things and you're going to have a ton of them on the battlefield. But if you're running solo, if you can, I would avoid that one. It shows up a lot. As you can see, we obviously have it on ours, but the biggest one is the wolf returning to you. Obviously, you want Scholar blood because scholar blood is going to synergize with all of the other things we have going on here and this is pretty much a full caster setup you can use whatever weapon you want to use i advise using the slashers for this for the camouflage ability and for the camouflage ability only so basically all you're going to do with this is spam your different spells and you're going to be able to spam your different spells a lot and you're going to get a ton of healing from this as well and it's going to be pretty difficult for any target, even
even a 1v1 target to really handle you because you're going to gain back so much health from these abilities. As I stated, this is more or less a caster setup, even when getting into a group of enemies, because both of these should be bouncing to different targets, you should be able to handle groups of enemies relatively easily, and you're going to be getting free casts, and if anything gets crazy, you can reposition yourself in the fight using the slashers and the camouflage ability. And you can see that even if you take damage, you regain so much health so fast from all of these abilities that it's hard for anybody to really do anything to you unless you basically just get overwhelmed. All right, and that's pretty much all I have for this one. If you found this video helpful or informational, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more V Rising content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.